Hello. It's all about making babies. Makeup. We see it every day in our classrooms, on the street, on TVs, and in movies. Fifteen billion dollars are spent on cosmetics a year worldwide. Even in a recession, the cosmetics industry has seen an almost two percent increase. Sure, a small percentage of this money is spent on men's products, but the overwhelming majority is purely women's sales. What is the root for this demand of what is the root of this demand of beauty products? Makeup is used to increase our attractiveness, but what is it about makeup? The answers are so deep rooted in our biology that the actual reasons are often clouded by our modern lives and overlooked. I have found that makeup is used to send signals that our brains perceive subconsciously, more than we actually do. I will be covering aspects of products for hair, overall skin, eyes, and for the lips. A common theme will seem a common theme we'll see in all these areas of these cosmetics is that the purpose is for sexual reproduction. Today I will reveal for you the unintentional messages women convey through cosmetics. One thing to notice through these points overall is that health and virility is what we actually perceive as beauty. And regardless of our race or gender, our human biology is the ultimate decision maker when it comes to what is aesthetically attractive. Uh, let's start from the top, shall we? Um, let's put this slide up here. I don't know if you see this on up. Uh, Martin Luther is quoted as saying, uh, the spiritual, so not, not, not Martin Luther King, uh, Martin Luther says, the hair is the richest ornament of a woman. Currently, there are 250,000 different hair salons in the U.S. alone. We see multi-million dollar advertisements for hair products everywhere and with the promise of strong and healthy, vibrant hair. <clears throat> Having healthy hair seems to be a uh, coveted trait by all women, but why? Why does the condition of the hair matter? Well, the truth is biological. A malnourished a, hair is an excellent indicator of overall nutrition. A malnourished person will have dull, limp, and thinning hair. But the main reason why malnutrition is a big deal is that it can also mean infertility and reproductive harm. A malnourished woman cannot conceive or cannot birth healthy offspring. Our brains perceive these um, as undesirable. Our brains perceive this as an undesirable trait to have, and so we can see why these commercials are not merely about bounce and volume. Oh, focus here real fast. Homer admired it, Ovid obsessed about it, Renaissance painters adored it, medieval churchmen demonized it, Elizabeth I agonized over it, Hitler murdered for it, Hitchcock was fascinated by it, and Hollywood exploited it. The most interesting fact about hair that I've found about hair cosmetics in my research is about blondes, natural and unnatural alike. According to an MSN article, in the United States today, approximately 40% of all women add one or more of the 500 plus different blonde shades available to their hair. This practice is not just a current happening. The blonde hair phenomenon has been throughout history and depicted it in, uh, in art and in uh, <coughs> uh, an ancient paintings and writings. The reason is not an obsession with this northern European genetic trait, but rather in free production. Let me explain. Well, when a woman becomes pregnant, a lot of changes happen in her body, and one of these is the overproduction of melanin. And melanin causes a slight darkening of her hair. Um, this triggers, this innately, uh, we innately perceive this, um, we can, it is a very, subtle difference in the hair, but our brains, it speaks volumes to our brains, and, and not until a woman can, no, can again reproduce or is again um, without child, does her hair return to her normal hair color, her, her slightly, slightly colored hair color returns. And we have innately perceived this light colored or blonde hair as an exaggeration uh, for a sign for reproductive readiness. And so maybe that's why we hear that blondes have more fun. Uh, <laughs> Let's move down to the face, shall we? Uh, face makeup, um, wait, ladies, please don't take this wrong, the wrong way, but face makeup is really about camouflage. Foundation and concealer is used to even out skin and blend, unble blend blemish uneven skin. The goal is to have smooth, clean, and healthy looking skin. 
a face rather, rather. Biologically, humans have a built-in antenna for good genes. And in Vienna, Austria, Carl Grammer has studied <coughs> that uh, it is our instinctive response uh, to skin attractiveness that is deeply rooted in human evolution. And he says, quote, one of the most basic pressures in evolution was the presence of parasites. So paras parasite resistance is a basic mating signal. In his study, uneven skin, discoloration, and unevenness were due to stresses on the immune system. So in, uh, so in, so in fact, the presence, of, the presence of smooth, even skin means that your genes could withstand disease and infection better, and is a prime candidate for producing disease-resistant offspring. Slide for this. This is just some pictures of some face and smooth skin and Angelina. Now, um, let me move on to the eyes. Um, <coughs> So let's take a good look at eye cosmetics, sorry. Got a little lost there. Eye makeup has two main roles, symmetry and seduction. Symmetry is defined as by Webster's as an arrangement characterized by a balance of harmonious proportions. The, symmetri the symmetrical face is a direct correlation to one's gene health. Uh, the human fetus is designed to develop in two even parts around the central axis of the spine. But tiny genetic abnormalities, poor nutrition, and mild infections can slightly alter a face design, leaving a permanent and subtle record. Therefore, better genes equal better symmetry. Uh, one, uh, our, our eyes are a great example of how we notice our symmetry. Has anyone ever looked? Has anyone ever looked in the mirror and uh, or seen a picture of themselves and noticed that one eye is larger or smaller than the other, or an eye is higher or lower? I'm sorry, an eye or eye. Uh, this is a. Uh, a good example of our asymmetries. Um, the cosmetics have a remedy for that. Eyeliner and eyeshadow can easily create the illusion of perfectly symmetrical eyes by adding uh, one or more or an exaggerating the other. Uh, now to the seduction side of makeup. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, is there now to the seduction side of makeup. Have you ever made lingering eye, tact, eye contact with someone and from across the room or even close up? Uh, how did that make you feel? You know that um, you know that that you knew that you were doing more than just gazing. Your brain is looking for a biological indicator in, in their eyes. When a human sees something pleasant or something they desire, our eyes respond. Your pupils dilate in order to bring in more light and to see someone or something better. And even during sexual arousal, do we have this automatic response of the dilation. It sends signals to our potential mates that we are into them. Uh, eyeliner, eyeshadow, and mascara enhance the focus towards the eyes and cause an illusion of dilation. This better draws an attention from others. Our eyes are called the windows to the soul, but I guess they are also doors to the bedroom. Uh, okay, uh, everyone close their eyes. Everyone close their eyes. And pictures uh, an attractive woman in the mirror, and she's getting ready for a big night out. She reaches for her lipstick. Uh, now, uh, she applies it to her full lips. Uh, what color does she just put on? I mean, it's rhetorical, but um, most likely, I mean, uh, times of year, she, you saw her putting on uh, some sh shade of red lipstick, and her lips are full. And most likely, you didn't choose uh, thin lips or colors like blue, black, or green, or yellow. They are very nice colors, uh, but there are something special about plump red lips. Uh, we can, you can use, the use of lipstick can be traced back uh, to Mesopotamia and ancient Egypt, where um, Cleopatra used uh, ma lipstick made from crushed carmine beetles. Uh, 